Hello everyone, welcome to Metallurgical Engineering YouTube channel. Today, we are going to discuss about new technologies used for reducing carbon dioxide emission in steel industries. We will start with the introduction and followed by five technologies used for reducing carbon dioxide emissions in steel industries. The iron and steel industry is the largest industrial source of carbon dioxide emissions due to intensity of steel production, its reliance on carbon-based fuels and reactants, and the large volume of steel produced over 1869.9 MT in 2019. Carbon-based fuels and reactants like coke and pulverized coal in blast furnace, around 1.7 minus 1.8 tons carbon dioxide per tons crude steel for the blast furnace and basic oxygen furnace route. Around 0.4 tons carbon dioxide per tons crude steel for scrap and electric arc furnaces route. Around 2.5 tons carbon dioxide per tons crude steel for coal-based direct reduced iron processes. Here you are seeing a schematic representation of carbon dioxide emissions in an integrated steel plants. First process is Technord process. This is a new approach to iron making technology that uses coal bonded self reducing agglomerates like pellets or briquettes produced from iron ore fines or iron bearing residues, plus fines of pet coke, coal, charcoal, or carbon bearing residues. These materials mixed with fluxing and binding agents are agglomerated and cured on dryer, producing briquettes which have sufficient strength for the physical and metallurgical demands of the Technord process. The agglomerates produced are smelted in a shaft furnace of high frequency, it is known as Technord furnace. This is the schematic of Technord process. There are three zones in Technord furnace, upper shaft melting zone and lower shaft zone. In the upper shaft zone of the furnace solid fuel is charged in the upper shaft. Bowdowered reaction on the fuel is prevented which saves energy. Post-combustion in this zone of the furnace burns carbon monoxide which provides energy for preheating and reduction of the charge. In the melting zone, reoxidation is prevented because of the reducing atmosphere in the charge. The melting of the charge takes place under reducing atmosphere. In THW lower shaft zone of the furnace, low-grade solid fuel is charged. The low-grade solid fuel can also include scrap plastics and used tires because of low stack height of the furnace. In this zone remaining reduction of residual iron oxides and slagging reaction of gang materials and fuel ash takes place in the liquid state. Also superheating of metal and slag droplets take place. The second process is molten oxide electrolysis. This process is completely carbon-free and produces no carbon monoxide, no carbon dioxide and produces only oxygen. This process is known for better quality, easier process, no hazardous waste produced and produces pure metal output. As you see in the figure, production of oxygen gas at the anode while liquid metal produces at cathode. This is the schematic diagram of molten oxide electrolysis. It is developed by Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Now the third process is coke dry quenching. This technology used in coke making plants for producing the coke with reduction in carbon dioxide emissions. Earlier we used wet quenching but nowadays we are replacing this with coke dry quenching. So coke dry quenching is a heat recovery system to cool the hot coke from coke ovens. It is one of the most renowned energy efficient and environmentally friendly facilities within steel production. Here you see the schematic of coke dry quenching. Coke dry quenching is a system where hot coke removed from coke ovens at a temperature of approximately 1000 degrees Celsius is cooled and kept dry with inert gas and the resulting steam produced in a waste heat recovery boiler is used to generate electricity, as the sensible heat recovered by heat transfer in the cooling chamber is utilized as a heat source for steam generation, electricity generated by coke dry quenching is clean, environmentally friendly energy. These energy are used in power plants, steel works and chemical plants. This is the coke dry quenching plant situated in Nippon Steel Corporation. 
So now coming to fourth process in this series, that is top gas recycling blast furnace process. As we know blast furnace gas consists of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, so main aim of this process is to capture the gas and reuse it and another one is lowering the usage of fossil carbon, coke and coal. The concept of this process involves many technologies like injection of reducing top gas components carbon monoxide and hydrogen in shaft and hearth tires, lowering the combustion of fossil carbon input due to lower coke rate, usage of pure oxygen instead of hot air at the hearth tire and recovery of pure carbon dioxide from the top gas for underground storage. This is the schematic of top gas recycling blast furnace process. Now come to last process in this video, that is Hisrana process. This process is more energy efficient and has a lower carbon footprint than traditional steelmaking processes. Major advantages of this process is that it removes the step of creating pig iron pellets or sinter to create a porous material for the blast furnace. It also removes the coke making plants for converting coal into coke. It means we are using iron ore and coke directly to the furnace as shown in the figure. Hisrana consists of a reactor with temperatures above the melting point of iron throughout the vessel, so that the injected iron ore instantly melts and converts into liquid iron. The process gases in the melting vessel have a high temperature, at the top of the reactor, in the cyclone, the temperature is increased further by adding pure oxygen, which reacts with the carbon monoxide present, because of the turbulence in the cyclone there is enough contact time for the hot gas to melt the iron ore, which is injected at the top. The iron ore immediately melts and drips to the bottom of the vessel. That is where the powder coal is injected causing the oxygen from the iron ore to bind with the carbon, this creating pure liquid iron, which can be tapped. This is the schematic diagram of Hisrana process. Thank you for watching. Please like, share this video and subscribe our channel. We will come back with another interesting topics in metallurgical engineering and material science.